Last time UVA beat Virginia Tech <laughs> in Blacksburg was your second year? Yeah, my second year. So we beat them my first year. 97, we beat them 31 to 7. And then the second year we came back. Yeah. And so uh when when I Googled you, and I've Googled you a couple times, the the picture that we you you and I can see and Kevin can see is uh your arms outreach. You've got the, the ball in your right hand, you're you're facing the sky. What had happened just before that picture was taken? Yeah, man. So we have we was making a, a drive from like the four yard line and we was running the same play. It was like mirrored um bench routes with a Y option to our to our tight end because they was playing a wide tackle six they was playing strong man and I wasn't in the game the first four plays of that drive Kevin Coffey had his contact pop out and I just ran in the game I don't I don't know if they could have called a timeout or they could have got his contact back in but I just shoot in the game because I was the third receiver in the three receiver set but I was next up if one of the two main guys went down and I'm running the game. I had just dropped the touchdown pass versus UNC the week before. And I hadn't touched the ball all game. And um, we called the same play. And Brooks stops me last breaking the huddle. He's like, Hawk, I'm going to come to you. And I'm like, why? He was <clears> like, they going to single coverage you. They going to shade to T. Wilk. T. Wilk had like 100 and maybe 30 yards, I think. Terrence Wilkins. And he's like, you're going to be one-on-one. You to the field. Just, just, just run the route. I'll get the ball to you. I'm like, okay. So I run my route, and it's not a very good bench route. Anthony Midget reads it. Um, he breaks downhill before I come out my break. So I'm thinking, okay, Aaron's not going to throw me the ball. So I come out my break kind of lazy because, you know, he's breaking on it so hard. I'm like, ain't no way he's going to throw it to me. He's screaming. So I turn, and I'm just here. I hear, I hear whistling, loud whistle. And then I see a white sleeve come in front of my face in this midget's arm. And the ball is coming. I'm like, oh, the ball is coming. And then when he puts his arm up, I can't see the ball anymore. So I'm like, damn, he must have. And before I get it, must have, I hear pink. And I just trap the sound. I just hear pink. And my right hand goes up to my face mask. And I trap it. Like both hands go up, but my right hand really touches the ball. Richmond Times dispatch has an old pitch. I got I got that picture downstairs, and I'm catching it. You can see me trap it with my right hand, and I take it for, with my right hand, and I just fork it like Coach Man taught me in high school. And once I turn in my head, and I got a couple pitches, I'm smiling because I'm like, none of these – like, I go back to my high school, they're like, none of these dudes going to catch me. Like, I'm laughing because I see guys – hustling and i'm just like <laughs> this game over y'all been talking all this trash it's been about three fights i'm running down and i just i'm laughing bro like i'm hysterically laughing like we about to come back and beat them and i'm about to score the winning touchdown and when i get to the goal line something just hits me it's like Naylon and ron not here my two cousins were supposed to come to that game and they got murdered for oh. that year mm. so something just dropped me down on my knees so when i'm on my knees right here and i'm looking to the sky i don't hear anybody i'm just thanking them and saying like this is for you so that pose is for my two deceased cousins mm. so that's why i love that it became like something that people call iconic because this reminds me of them you know what i'm saying so that pose had nothing to do with football and i'm glad they didn't throw an unsportsmanlike conduct on me for that but i stayed down there for quite a minute and i couldn't hear nothing i was just talking to them in the sky and i remember getting up i did do the uh slash on the throat running off the field um but yeah so you didn't get a flag for the slash on the throat no i didn't get it i didn't get a flag man they were lenient back then you could do anything in the end zone back, back in those <laughs> days <laughs> I, I had no idea you'd had such uh loss in your life um uh, before you scored that touchdown. That's yeah, uh, man. That's I, went through, story. I went through a lot um, cause I had tore my ankle up and had to have major surgery after I scored against Florida state, my freshman year against Maryland in November of 97. And I was still rehabbing. I remember getting my pen out and I got the news from one of my friends from Hampton that didn't know that those two gentlemen were my, my cousins. So she was like, you know Chanel and Saron Gibson? And I'm about to be like, yeah, they my cousins. If I could get they my cousins out. She was like, man, some dude shot them. They got murdered. 15 shots and 14 shots in the other one. And I just broke down the tears. I was on crutches. Mm. And I just, whew, 
in the elevator. And she's like, what the hell is wrong with you? And I remember Womack saying, yo, those are his cousins. You just told him his cousins got murdered. Like, wow. nonch- like nonchalant, because she didn't know. So, yeah. Yeah. So that was a rough. That that year was rough for me because I never dealt with surgery, and then I never dealt with death like that. So that 9 season was a trying time for me. I dropped a lot of passes that year, too. 